writing proposals is for muggins. Don't do it. It's a waste of everybody's time. I'm going to say it. We've given away a proposal template for over 10 years. That proposal template has made multiple, multiple, multiple millions of dollars for this company over the last 10 years and has attracted tens of thousands of subscribers to our email list and helped us grow a company. And I am burning it to the ground. Proposals are dead. We'd no longer give away our proposal template. It is over. Hey gang, welcome to a, a very special live here in the Digital Mavericks Facebook group, listening to something by MF Doom, which is uh, probably uh, a nice segue into why we're here today. We're going to talk about why proposals are dead. Yes, if you are still writing proposals. Uh, by the way, before I dive in here, just give me a uh, give me a yes in the chat, in the comments. Give me a yes if you can see my face and hear my voice. If you can hear my voice and see my face, uh, give me a yes in the comments to let me know that it is all working. Great, awesome. Max says yes. He's producing remotely. He's working from home today and producing the show remotely. How cool is that? All right, so today we're going to talk about why proposals are dead and... Uh, there's a couple of things that I want to touch on here. Uh, if you're, by the way, if you're still writing proposals, then, well, here we go, that's not the right screen. If you're still writing proposals, you're probably, I'm going to share my screen in a moment and walk you through my thinking around this. But if you're still writing proposals, I can guarantee you a couple of things. One, it's taking too long to convert prospects into paying clients. And two, you just don't have enough control over the process. So I'm going to show you what to do instead. Um, before we dive in, by the way, it's the world's worst kept secret, I think, that we've got a brand new training coming out to help you sell and deliver paid discovery sessions. If you're not getting paid to do discovery sessions with clients, then there might be a couple of reasons. One, you're calling them discovery sessions. And frankly, nobody wants to pay for discovery sessions. But two, uh, if you're not getting paid, then you're actually giving the most valuable part of the whole thing away for free. If you're, if you're getting on a call with someone and they're just picking your brain and you're kind of telling them what you can and can't do, and then they say, can you, great, can you send me a proposal and tell me how much it's going to cost? Just let me know if that's a common... Does that resonate with you guys is that a common thing where you is that a common experience where you get on a pro, you get on a call with a prospect they tell you a little bit about what they want to achieve you tell them what is and what isn't possible you try and convince them that you can do the job then they say great can you send me a proposal you send the proposal and then pff, they go dark and you never hear from them or it might take three months for them or you get pushed back on the price they want to negotiate is that a common thing just let me know uh, in the chat, are you still writing proposals? Are you wasting time writing proposals? There's a couple of reasons paid discovery, I think, are a, a breath of fresh air for your agencies, but I'll, which I'll get into in a minute. However, if you just want the head start on this, we do have a training coming out uh, at the end of this week uh, all around how to sell and deliver paid discovery. So if you want to get... Uh, early access and you want to be the first to know when our paid discovery method is released, just go to agencymavericks.com slash waitlist. I believe is the, uh, I believe that is the, um, the URL. Uh, uh, Agency Mavericks, I was going to say WP Elevation then. Agencymavericks.com slash waitlist, I believe is the uh, URL. So just get on over there. Oh, there we go. Paid discovery blueprint waitlist. Wow, that's a that's a mouthful, isn't it? Anyway, they'll put the link uh, in the comments there on the screen. Get over there, sign up so that you are the first to uh, be notified when we go live later this week. And I've just been told, but waitlist will work as well. Agencymavericks.com slash waitlist. All right, so let's dive in. What I want to do is I want to share my screen. I'm going to walk you through the typical process that freelancers or agencies go through to convince someone to hire them to deliver a website or SEO or branding or a funnel or whatever it is, right? I'm just going to walk you through the typical process that we go through 
Uh, and I did this for years, by the way, because I didn't know any other way because I wasn't around then to teach me how to do it better, right? So this is what I did and this is what I am guessing well, I'm not guessing. This is what I know most of you are doing because I have conversations with freelancers and agencies every single day of the week in our programs and also outside of our programs who tell me that this is where they're stuck, right? So let me share my screen. I'm going to open Whimsical. Please tell me you can see my screen there. You can. Excellent. All right. So this is the typical process. Let me just see if I... Here we go. Here's the typical process. Let me just zoom in a little bit here. Uh, usually what happens is we get wind of the fact that somebody's interested in us working with them, right? So that might just be a contact form on the website, might be someone sends you an email, they pick up the phone, you get a referral. We kind of know that there's someone there who wants to have a conversation with us, right? Typically what we do is we go through this initial call. I've got some notes here, right? The client gives you a very loose brief on what they want, you ask some clarifying questions and you start giving away your IP, designing a strategy in the hope that you'll impress them enough that they'll ask you for a proposal. That's the purpose of the initial call. Let's just jump on an initial call and see if we're a good fit to work together. Right? And they say, well, I've got, I want to build, this is a true story. I want to build LinkedIn for naturopaths. It's a true story. I want to build LinkedIn for naturopaths, right? And you go, oh, cool, well, you know, we can do that because WordPress has this thing called Buddy Boss and we can build a virtual social network and blah, 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 blah. In fact, the, this, this initial call that you have with someone, the success metric for that call is that they ask you for a proposal. If they ask you for a pro proposal, you get off that call and you go, well, that went well, didn't it? They've asked me for a proposal. Woohoo! right and we get all excited and then we go and we we work on a proposal and we, if you're smart you're using the one that we used to give away for free we did that for 10 years we gave away that proposal te template for 10 years we gave that proposal template away for free and it helped a bunch of people but guess what the world has changed ladies and gentlemen and so let me walk you through what happens usually, typically, as you write it. You might, you might be using BidSketch or you might be using Better Proposals or one of those fancy proposal software programs that we recommended you do for years and it worked beautifully. But the world has changed because what happens is you write the proposal, right? You try and convince the client to hire you for the project. You make your best guess about the pricing and maybe include a case study of a past client for credibility if you're really smart. And after a few hours of tweaking and polishing, you submit the proposal and cross your fingers. What happens then is you submit the proposal and you lose all control over the process. You literally are then waiting for them to say yes or no, right? And you've got no control whatsoever what do you do ring them up and go oh, i'm just wondering if you got my proposal because i'm desperate and i need the money do you have any questions about the proposal yes can you do it cheaper do you really need do i really need to pay that much for that right you've got no control over this part of the process and then you put them into some kind of follow-up sequence if you're really savvy and you've got your shit together and you've actually had the time to implement our anti-follow-up sequence you might use that and then they approve the proposal or they just go missing okay now, let me just show you, let me just overlay the buyer's journey over this, right? Here we go. Any purchaser usually goes through three big phases of the buyer's, of the buyer's journey, awareness, consideration, and decision. Now, awareness is they are aware that they have a problem that needs solving or an opportunity worth exploring. So let me give you an example. Uh, a shop that sells physical product, want to get into e-commerce because of the pandemic. They want to tap into a global or a national audience. They want to start shipping their stuff all over the place. My wife the other day, she bought some sandals from a shop in Byron Bay and they delivered it here to Melbourne. I said, hey, what's this $95 on the credit card that you're spending? 
She said, I bought some sandals. I said, good for you. Just wanted to know what it was so I know what category to put it in. And what were you doing in Byron Bay without me? She said, I wasn't. They have an e-commerce store and I bought it online and it was shipped to me in the post. It's remarkable, isn't it, right? So at some point, this shop in Byron Bay went, you know what? We need to get online. We need to set up an e-commerce store, one of those fancy online shops. And they went to an agency. So they are now aware that they have a problem, right? Problem is our local market shrinking and we've been in lockdown for two years and our revenue's going backwards. Opportunity, we could get online and tap into a global audience. So they're aware now. They're not considering, they haven't, they haven't got options in front of them. They're just aware that there's a part of the business they wanna fix or work on, right? So then, and usually what happens is they might go, well, let's talk to a local. I know someone who builds e-commerce stores. His name's Cousin Billy. Let's get on a call with Cousin Billy. In fact, let's get Cousin Billy to come in the shop and he can tell us all about what he knows. And I said, Cousin Billy optimistically runs along to the shop and, um, and says, yes, I'm here. I can build Wo WooCommerce websites for you and get you online, get you into the 21st century. And then Cousin Billy writes them a proposal and at this point, they are now in the consideration phase, which is the most important phase of the entire buyer's journey because they can be aware that they have a problem for years, right? Think about it. How many times have you been aware of something that you need to fix and it's taken you three years because it's just not that much of a, it's not a huge problem and you don't really know what to do next and so you kind of just let it sit there and you don't actually fix it for years. We've all got things that we haven't fixed for years, right? And we've all lost opportunities because we didn't really know what to do next. So the awareness phase can take a long time. The consideration phase is where they actually have momentum. They've taken some action to try and solve this problem. They're now in the consideration phase and this is where we typically submit a proposal and then disappear, right? And we leave them to their own devices to consider the options and make a decision, which is ridiculous because they don't have the skills or the experience or the knowledge to consider their options and make a decision. The, the time when they need us the most is the very time that we just abandon them and leave them on their own, right? Well done you. Well done you for giving them a proposal that's confusing and then abandoning them and letting them make the decision on their own. That's the time they actually need you the most, right? And you have no control over, over the rest of that. You're just now waiting for them to call you up and say, Cousin Billy, we would like to build that Shopify store. I had my, my phone's on flight mode and the phone still rings. Go figure that out. I'm going to have to do some research and figure out how to stop that happening. So the, uh, you're waiting for them to call you up and say, yes, we're ready to go. And every time you contact them while they're in consideration mode, right, you lose a little bit of power because you're showing them that you are desperate and that you need them and you make them the prize. Every time you contact them during this consideration phase here, right? You lose more power. So what to do instead is the big question. Well, let me show you. Uh, let me go back to Whimsical. I'm going to show you our sales process and I'm going to show you where paid discovery fits into this. Now, by the way, just before I dive on, before I dive on, before I dive in, here and do this. Uh, if you want the fast track here and you'd like us to help you set up paid discovery in your business, go to agencymavericks.com slash waitlist. Put in your name and your email address and you'll be the first to know when we launch this training. This is a limited training. We're only launching it to a certain number of people. Once we're full, we're done. And that's because I want to make sure that everyone that goes through the paid discovery method actually gets results and gets this set up in their business. I'm going to be working closely with people in paid discovery 
I'm going to make sure that you take action and get results. So we are, this is a small cohort that we're putting in, okay? So waitlist, agentsmavericks.com slash waitlist. So let's have a look at the Maverick sales process now, okay? Let's have a look at the Maverick sales process. The, what happens is if I just go back to Whimsical and zoom in here so I can see it because I'm an old man and my vision is failing me. Oh, don't move things. Here we go. Here we go. What happens now is same deal. Somebody still puts their hand up and says that they're interested. It, it doesn't matter where they come from. Referrals, contact form on your website, networking event. Someone recommends you on social media, Messenger, LinkedIn, whatever. It doesn't matter. Somebody has put their hand up and said, hey, we need, to, we need to build an online store and someone said that you do that, can we have a conversation? What we do now is we qualify them. I'm not going to go through this. This is all part of what we teach in Sales Accelerator. But what essentially I can tell you is that before you even, before you have a proper call with them, you want to just make sure of a couple of key things. One, that you're talking to the decision maker, not someone just doing some research, right? You want to make sure that they've got some kind of budget put aside and they'll probably say things like, oh, well, we don't know. We, you know, haven't got a clue how much this costs. We're hoping you can tell us. My answer is cool. I, I can eventually tell you how much this is going to cost based on, you know, what you need, which I don't know yet. Uh, but what I'm curious about is, are you allocating a budget for this project or are you going to try and fund it out of, you know, your general kind of operating expenses or like have you carved off a slice of money and gone okay we're going to get online we need to put some money aside for this have you ha have you had that thought yet right no i haven't got a clue no if it costs more than five grand i'll just take it out of my savings if they're saying that kind of thing well that's a huge red flag right so what's their timeline well we need an online store built in three weeks eh, not going to happen who's the uh, decision maker john he's on the golf course at the moment i'm just doing some research i'm his assistant eh, not going to happen. And have you thought about budget? No, nah, haven't got a clue. If it costs any more than three grand, John's going to take it out of his trust fund. Eh, not going to happen, right? So you just want to qualify them to make sure that they're a serious inquiry, that you're talking to the decision maker and that they've at least thought about budget and they've got a realistic timeline. Once we do that, we then want to get them on a, a call. We want to book in the calendar sorry i don't have time to talk to you right now let's make a time that we can actually have a bit more of a detailed conversation and this is what is known as a triage call right so we book them in we then do some stuff in, and here's why we book them in the calendar because we want a little bit of time between booking them in and actually having the call i would suggest 48 hours is the sweet spot because that gives us enough time to build a little bit of trust before we have that call, right? And this is just, you know, some email reminders and a text reminder. Maybe there's another email that you send them with a video of a case study, some touch point, some little piece of content that kind of builds trust. So by the time they get on the triage call, they're already like, huh, cousin Billy ain't just a web design freelancer anymore. He's like getting his shit together and looks a bit professional, okay? Now, the rest of the sales process, which I'm not going to bore you with because I'm going to come back to this triage call in a minute, the rest of the sales process kind of looks like this. You, you, you kind of really qualify them on the triage call. If they're not right, you get rid of them because, by the way, they're going to lie to you to get on a call. They're going to tell you they've got heaps of money. They're going to tell you that you're talking to the decision maker. They're going to tell you that it doesn't have to happen for three months. Then you get on this call, you do a bit more of a deeper dive and you realise that they're not a good fit, so you bounce. Yep, look, I can't help you, sorry. Go and talk to someone else. If they do qualify, we book them through for what is known as a strategy session, which I'll come back to in a second. Then we have some more touch points, some more content, some more authority building. So by the time they get on the strategy session, they're ready to buy. Now, this here can be replaced with paid discovery, okay? And there are a couple of distinctions you don't have to sell paid discovery to every prospect, by the way, okay? It's paid discovery works really well in one of two situations. One, they don't know what they're doing, which is most of the time, okay? Or you're not exactly sure how much it's going to cost because we're not really sure what the scope is yet, okay? So from either of these calls, the triage call or the strategy session, on either of these calls, you can just sell paid discovery. 
The reason you can do it off this first call is because it's a lower ticket product. We're not pitching a $15,000 website on this first call because there's not enough trust in the relationship, okay? On the second call, you could pitch a $15,000 website. I still think that's a bit stupid. I would still be pitching paid discovery. And in fact, some of our Maverick Club members are having a lot of success just pitching paid discovery straight off the triage call and kind of skipping all of this. This whole sales process then just gets rolled into the paid discovery session, right? And by the way, don't call it paid discovery because they won't buy it and they won't value it. I'll talk more about that in the training that we're putting out uh, later this week. So from this triage call, you can basically just sell paid discovery. What's the price point? Good question. Don't know. Uh, it depends on the scope of the project. But typically, we're not selling a $15,000 project here. We might be selling paid discovery for between $500 and $1,500 or five hundred and five grand. It depends. I've sold paid discovery for $250 an hour to five grand for a full day. Okay, so it depends on what you think if the final scope of the project is and really that comes down to how many decision makers there are if there are three partners in an accounting firm you might be sell selling paid discovery for two and a half three grand right if there's one person and they're a solopreneur or a sole trader and they're a fast decision maker you might sell paid discovery for 500 bucks for a couple of hours it depends okay but the point is this entire sales process you can actually acquire a new client here right on this triage call which is way quicker than going through this entire process <clears throat> now by the way <clears throat> this process is still better than the previous process of setting a proposal and having no control because you'll notice there is there are no proposals here there are no proposals here what we do instead is we submit we sell paid discovery Right. We then run paid discovery and then we submit a statement of work on the back end of paid discovery, which I'll talk more about in the training. We submit a statement of work and we actually get them to sign on for a bigger project to build what we've scoped out during paid discovery. Okay. Makes sense. Let me know if you've got any questions about this stuff. First of all, let me know if this is helpful. And second of all, let me know if you have any questions about this, right? Anonymous Facebook user says, I was thinking about only doing consulting proposals, one proposal only, access to my experience in creative services for a monthly price, yep, just an idea I've been testing and seems to be working, yes, if they don't pay, services stop, sure, if they leave, they get what they have, yep, if they leave, since there is a term, I can still use retainer or expected contract, sure, so I, I don't deliver anything for my private clients, I don't do coding, design, copywriting, nothing, I give them my frameworks, I help them work out what they want to achieve, we set goals, I help them design a strategy, I keep them accountable, I advise them on what tactics they should use next. I don't do anything and I don't write proposals anymore, right? It's a qualifying call, hey, I think we're a good fit to work together, I think we probably need to scope this out a little bit more, let's run a, a workshop, I don't call it paid discovery, I'll tell you what I call it another time. Uh, in the training, I'll tell you what I call it. And you should name it something other than paid discovery because people don't value paid discovery. They certainly don't value a strategy session because that's been given away for free for 100 years now. So don't call it a strategy session because they don't value that. Put a name on it, turn it into a product, make it valuable, put a price tag on it, sell that, acquire customers way quicker and way earlier in the process. And here's the deal. Here's the rub. Here's why this works. If you sell paid discovery called something else for $500 to a client, it is exponentially easier to then sell that client a ten dollars or $15,000 project than it is to sell a $6,000 project to a stranger, right? Exponentially easier, like, like magnitudes of 20 Way easier. If someone's giving you $500 for a workshop, selling them a $15,000 engagement is 100 times easier than selling them a $5,000 project off the bat if they don't know who you are and there's no trust, right? And you haven't delivered value. So we have Mavericks who are converting from paid discovery into full project at 85%. So they're getting... Here's the... Like, write this down. They're getting paid to work with the client, to scope out what the client needs and then closing at 85%. 
versus the old days of not getting paid to do we had someone join Mavericks and if you go back through the agency hour podcast it, you won't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out who I'm talking about here but we had someone join Mavericks Club who came out of another agency coaching program yay for them and they were taught to do five free strategy sessions before writing a proposal what the actual fuck what the actual fuck are people teaching agency owners to do five free strategy sessions before writing a proposal stab myself in the face with a blunt pencil jesus who's got time to do that this person didn't that's why they joined us <laughs> now two sessions bang done right what the actual fuck says daniel yes and on the back you got to be shitting me right I don't know, like, you know, whatever. I mean, people have their thing, you know, who am I to judge? Anyway, this Maverick now doing his first $50,000 months in revenue, sales process has shrunk down to two calls, right? So, uh, correct, we're not here to fuck spiders. So let's get on with it, right? This, the, the paid discovery method is going to show you how to close clients at a much smaller price point off that first call, acquire customers way quicker because it's easier for them to say yes because the low ticket offer is way cheaper. They don't, they're, not, they're not going, well, hang on, I just met you and now you're asking me to invest $3,000 a month into your signature system, right? I'm not willing to do that. But I'll spend $800 on a workshop to make sure, you know, we don't fuck this up, to make sure that we save time and save money in the long run. Sure. And then... In fact, if I don't like you after that workshop, I don't even have to hire you. I've got a great strategy. You're telling me that then I've got a great strategy that I can go and shop around to other agencies? Absolutely. I'll pay $500 or $700 or $1,200 for that. No problem. And then off the back of that, it's way easier to get them to commit to you actually helping them out, which could be a $15,000 project or it could be a $3,000 a month program, whatever it is you're selling, which is a whole other conversation. So, is this helpful? Let me know if this is helpful. Someone says, love the new studio view. So do I. I'm loving it. I'm loving the new studio. It's a little cold in winter, but we're fixing the heating. It's okay. It's all good. The best thing about this room is there's no fucking sewage floating around, right? That's the best thing about this building. No one's flooding us with sewage, like happened twice in the old building. By the way, uh, just a public service announcement. If you're in Melbourne and you're looking to expand your business, don't go and work at Revolver Lane on Chapel Street because eventually they'll flood your office with sewage. Take it from me. You've been warned. So now uh, let me – what I want to do is I want to show you uh, the, the – here. so you might be saying now, well, that's fine, dude, but I don't know how to run paid discovery. I've never done it before. I'm not exactly sure what to say or what questions to ask and how do I structure it. It was not cleared by legal at all. No, that public service announcement was not cleared by legal. <laughs> uh, I'm just stating the facts. There's no opinion here, just the facts. My studio got flooded twice with actual sewerage. So, you know, don't need that to be cleared by legal. Uh, so what I wanted to do is I want to show you this epic workbook that we put together let me know if you can see that on the screen here we go this is i'm just going to give you a teaser here because you know you kind of told me yesterday in the facebook group that you wanted to see the workbook for the paid discovery method we're still calling it the paid discovery blueprint that's how fast things change around here this is now what i'm about to show you here is the paid discovery blueprint which is basically the soup to nuts of how to run a paid discovery workshop for a client. Now this can be done, I'm giving away the farm here. This can be done on Zoom. You can do this over a two hour period on Zoom or a four hour workshop on Zoom, or you can do it in person at an actual, you know, a space with a whiteboard and a screen and all that kind of stuff if you want to, or you can just do it on Zoom, all right? There's a few things you're gonna need. You're gonna need questions to ask. You're gonna need 
a workbook for them to make notes. You're going to need a slide deck of some description so that they've got somewhere to rest their eyes. And you're going to need a structure and you're going to need a timeline. And hell, you might even want a template you can import into ClickUp that shows you exactly what to do when so you can literally follow the bouncing ball. Well, good news is we've built all of that for you. This is directly, this is exactly what I do for paid discovery workshops. This is the exact same method and ClickUp template and workbooks and slide deck and everything that we give our Mavericks Club members who pay us a significant amount of money to be in Mavericks Club every year. And for the first time, we are taking this out and making it available to you guys uh, on Friday, I believe. It starts at the end of this week. But I just wanted to tease you because it's a pretty epic workbook. I'm not going to go into the details here. I'm just going to tease you. First thing we do is we give you a timeline of what happens, right? This is how, this is when you sell it. This is when you run it. This is what you do next. Then in the timeline, we give you a checklist of all, I can hear you taking screenshots, by the way. Then we give you a checklist of all the things that need to happen for each part of that so you don't miss anything. By the way, we've built all of this in ClickUp for you, right? Here's the sales call. Here's how to actually sell paid discovery. That's right. This is the script, ladies and gentlemen, for how to sell paid discovery, right? Then we tell you exactly how to send the calendar invites and what to put in the calendar invite. Just copy and paste. It's a no-brainer. Then we give you the participant workbook. Here is the participant workbook. That It's a Canva template. It's editable. It's white labeled. You just change the colors and the fonts if you like and stick your logo on it and give it to your client, right? It's completely done. I don't know if this works. Maybe it does. Oh, look at that. It does. So I'm going to show you. Here we go. Here's a little sneaky peek. Here's the workbook with all the worksheets that they need to fill in, right? Look at that. Isn't it genius? Um, huge shout out to Kat Townsend, by the way, that's built all these assets for us because she is a superstar. Now, they've got a workbook that they fill in during the paid discovery method. You also need a workbook as a facilitator so you know what questions to ask and you know what exercises to give them. Well, guess what? You've got one of them too. Here's your facilitator's workbook. I feel like we should have some steak knives. Do we have steak knives? Come on, we've got to have steak knives. Or Sharpies. We should give away a bonus pack of Sharpies. Not puppies, texters, markers, Sharpie markers, not dogs. We're not giving away dogs. No one's giving away free dogs. We're giving away markers. Actually, we're not. I just said we should, but we're not. We're giving away this, what you're seeing on the screen. Uh, here's the facilitator's workbook, right? Here is exactly how to run the workshop, step by step. This is exactly what to say and exactly how to run the workshop. It's all here, right? We also give you a white-labeled slide deck, right? An editable Canva template. Here you go. Here's the slide deck. This is what you put on the screen. Obviously, you just tweak this and you make it a bit look a bit more like yours, right? Uh, and here it is, right? Here's the all the worksheets and when they do the exercises. What do I say when? It's all here, okay? Uh, then emails to send, pre-framing emails to send to confirm the workshop. So by the time they get to the workshop, they're ready to go and they're already pre-framed to see you as the expert, exactly what you do here, what you say, the emails to send, just copy and paste, right? We've left no stone unturned, ladies and gentlemen. And then after the workshop, what do you do? Well, we go back and we run a recommendation session, which is essentially a pitch to get them to agree to hire us to deliver all the stuff that we scoped out during the session, right? Here's the final workbook. Again, we take all the notes from the workshop, we put it together in the final workbook. Then we have an executive summary that we put together, which basically summarizes what we discovered during the discovery workshop. We send that over to the leadership team or the decision makers. Uh, then we get on a call with them and we present our recommendations. And look at that, we've even got a script for how we present our recommendations. Isn't that nuts? That is just absolutely cray cray, right? Literally, literally, batteries are included. Yes, says Facebook user, batteries are included. Someone says that the speech is out of sync. 
it's probably just because I'm old and my brain works faster than my mouth these days or my mouth works faster than my brain. Don't be alarmed. It's probably not the technology. It's probably me that's out of sync. So uh, there we go. <laughs> that's what's coming. That's the workbook. Now, <clears throat> I know you've got a lot of questions. By the way, if you want the fast route, the fast route to this, if you want the fast track, just go to agencymavericks.com slash waitlist. Put your name and email address in and you will be the first to get notified when this goes live. Tomorrow on the agency hour, by the way, if I am not mistaken, we are having a conversation with a very special guest who we've talked about a lot here at Agency Mavericks. He's one of our shining stars. He is probably the epitome of what is possible if you trust the process and take action. Of course, his name is Adam Silverman. He is from Mule Town Digital in Williamsport, Tennessee. He's a drummer. He's a dear friend of mine. I cannot wait to hang out with him again in September when I'm stateside. And he's coming on <clears throat> tomorrow. <clears throat> excuse me. He's coming on the agency hour tomorrow to talk to us about how selling paid discovery has completely transformed his business. Right? So if you want to get inspired about this, check out tomorrow's episode of the agency hour. Let me know in the chat here. Uh, if this has been helpful, Danny says, I'm impressed by mug and cup collection you have on your desk. <clears throat> do I, do I have, do I have a mug and cup collection on my desk? I can't, I've got, well, I've got, you know, I'm drinking coffee. I have more mugs in my office, actually, actual mugs. Star I collect Starbucks mugs whenever I travel, Danny. Um, and this is a, uh, this is a, this is a cheesy mug that my parents made me when we had kids, when we had Oscar, actually. Uh, it says, uh, uh, what does it say? Let's celebrate today and always. A cheesy mug with pictures of my wife and I with Oscar when he was first born. Um, so there you go. I'm sure you were. Now, hang, here's an interesting one. This is probably my favourite. I won this from Ecamm. Right? They're a live streaming software company. I won this that we're not using right now. Right now we're using StreamYard. But this is Ecamm. And I won this for um, being active in the Ecamm Facebook group. And they sent that to me in the post. And it didn't break. It's a really good mug. So there you go. Uh, anyway, what questions do you have about paid discovery? It's not whitelist. It's waitlist. Sorry, you'll have to excuse my... Australian accent. We're a bunch of convicts down here. It's agencymavericks.com slash waitlist. Waitlist, not white list. It's waitlist, right? There it is on the screen. That's the one there. Uh, we're going to run a competition called Count the Drinking Vessels on Troy's Desk. Far out. Focus, ladies and gentlemen. Focus. <laughs> Paid discovery is the answer here. PDM, the paid discovery method, it's the fastest way to attract new clients and convert new clients into your business. And it's also the fastest way to shorten your sales cycle and then upgrade those new clients that you've just acquired into highly valuable ongoing clients with long-term relationships and high lifetime value. And the training comes out this Friday, I believe. So get on over to agencymavericks.com slash waitlist and uh, get all the details. All right, so I think that's it. I think that's all we have for now, okay? So to recap, writing proposals is for muggins. Don't do it. It's a waste of everybody's time. I'm going to say it. We've given away a proposal template for over 10 years. That proposal template has made multiple, multiple, multiple millions of dollars for this company over the last 10 years and has attracted tens of thousands of subscribers to our email list and helped us grow a company. And I am burning it to the ground. Proposals are dead. We'd no longer give away our proposal template. It is over, right? <laughs> Wrong button. Wrong button. There we go. There we go. The proposal template's done. It's dead. Stop it. You don't need it anymore. Run a really good triage call, sell paid discovery, and then give them a statement of work. Get paid to scope out and you know what else you can do? 
you get paid to run a paid discovery, you can then actually say to the client, listen, based on what I know about you and the fact that you're a lunatic with unrealistic expectations and you're a tight ass, I don't want to take you on as a client. Thank you very much. I'm glad we ran that session. Have your strategy, take your workbook and run along. Go find someone else to play with, right? Gillian Brandon just did that recently. Well, she might not have been that straightforward about it. She might have been a bit more diplomatic, but uh, she uh, worked with a client and then said during paid discovery and then went, no, nope, don't want to work with you anymore and dodged a bullet. So that's the new way. The new way of acquiring clients as an agency is paid discovery. Just don't call it paid discovery. We'll talk more about that uh, in the uh, training that is coming out Friday. Agencymavericks.com slash waitlist to be the first to know when that training is live. We'll see you tomorrow morning on the Agency Hour podcast, tomorrow morning Melbourne time, on the Agency Hour podcast, and we'll be talking with Adam Silverman about how selling paid discovery has completely transformed his business. And by the way, he doesn't run paid discovery anymore. His team do it. He's a very clever man. Look forward to hanging out then. Right now, I have to jump into a call with an actual client. Uh, who I'm servicing on a regular basis, one of my favourite clients. They're not an agency. This is one of my very, very, very uh, dear private clients who are not an agency and I'm going to talk with them for about an hour and not do anything and they're going to pay me handsomely for it. So uh, I'll go and do that right now and I will see you all tomorrow on the Agency Hour podcast. Until then, I'm Troy Dean. Bye for now.